Welcome back to the ADCC Update Show. I'm your host, Big Nasty. With me as always, we got Uncle Reed, Joey Stats over there. <clears throat> we got a, you know, we've been some, we've been some, uh, we've been some busy boys out there. A lot of events, a lot of jujitsu going on, you know, all over the place. Uh, but you know, today we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about West Coast trials, maybe some other things. But before we get into that, what what have you been boys? What have you boys been up to, huh? Yeah, big week, man. ADCC trials at the end of this week, so that you know, second best grappling tournament maybe you know of the year, second only to the World Championship. So this is a super exciting one. Obviously, you boys just came back from from Brazil mm -hmm. not too long ago. A uh, lot going on in the world of grappling. There was like a hundred events last weekend. Um, everybody was watching those. So. Man, Man, yeah, if you're if you're a grappling fan, you got a lot going on this week. For sure. And I, I like this tune a lot that we got playing in our ears still. But if we could go ahead and cut that and just get to the brass tacks, dude, because I want to talk about some things, not listen to music this whole time. <laughs> so so if we could cut that and then uh, we'll see uh, what else we've been into. Joe, what have you been up to? Man, training a lot. We've been doing a lot of WNO stuff, getting a lot ready for the next WNO that's coming up on May 10th. That's going to be super exciting. Announcing matches for that all the time. Uh, getting ready for... West Coast Trials this upcoming weekend. Just got done with pants. It's always something new with Flow Grappling. Yeah, for sure. So I don't know if you guys could hear us before. I don't know if the music was playing over us or not. But like I said, we're going to talk a little bit about West Coast Trials in this podcast. We're going to preview the divisions. Uh, we're going to get into some topics, maybe some stories. I think West Coast Trials is always just like one of the most fun Absolutely. events of the year. You Absolutely, know, man. It's kind of you feel how much is on the line. You feel how much it like this tournament matters you yeah, know yeah. for a lot of the north american grapplers like this is your last chance like it's like you're gonna be at adcc if you're gonna be walking out at t-mobile arena august 17 18th like this is your chance to punch that ticket it's almost like a like like a mini adcc it's in vegas yeah. you know obviously seth and uh the adcc guys really do up um the west coast trials really really big uh, i think 77 kilograms is already capped out maybe sure. even 66 or uh, you know obviously there's just last i saw it was like like Closing in on a thousand total competitors, seventy-seven, like you said, closed. Yeah, but, uh, so it's so many guys. These divisions are stacked. This genuinely is like one of the very best tournament jujitsu tournaments of the year. So stoked about it. Um, plenty of big names in there. Like you said, you finally get to see who's going to the big show. So nothing, nothing better than the West Coast Trials, man. This one's sick. Hundred percent. Before before we dive in to this preview uh, too much. I got a few things I want to go over, you know, maybe I guess that grappler in there. But first, I want to talk about uh, kind of like a little a little mini film, I guess. How, how would you describe it, Reed? We recently dropped uh, a little mini film, Not yeah. Bad for a Hillbilly. It's all about Jacob Couch's run. You want, you want to talk about it a little bit, Reed? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, Not Bad for a Hillbilly. Just dropped it. It's up on flowgrappling.com and the YouTube channel. If you haven't checked it out, definitely give that one a play. It was a lot of fun for us to, to work on. Um, you know, obviously, Jacob Couch punched his ticket to the ADCC World Championships at the East Coast Trials. And, you know, while we were there, I think both of us, Trey, knew just how special, special of a performance uh, Jacob Couch had out there. You know, seven matches, seven submissions, just an absolute killer performance and so we were like man we got to do something special to, to really showcase what jacob uh accomplished at this tournament because it was just it was wild 100 percent, dude so we got a little uh i guess kind of a trailer teed up for you guys it's just really like an excerpt from the film itself basically we're gonna pick up right after couch uh Gets a win against David Garmo, and now he's going into the J-Rod match. So if you want to go ahead and roll this trailer, we'll sit back and uh, let you guys enjoy this for a second. Day two, match six against Jacob Rodriguez, 2021, West Coast Trials champion. I've been putting all, every fucking thing, every day to jujitsu. It's finally paying off. But the thing about that trials was that was my, that was the second trials I was doing because I got third at the East Coast and I didn't medal at the West Coast. It's in the past, whatever. But I remember sitting there, I remember sitting there mat side for Hunter versus J-Rod in the final. And it was one of the most 
painful, guttening, wrenching feelings I've ever had. And the only thing I could think to myself was this, I should be out, that, I can beat these guys. I know I can beat these guys, I should be out there. This is, this is, this is quite literally, like, it hurts, you know, it hurts really. It fucking sucks, man. I made myself watch it. I made myself stand there and watch the entire match. The whole, whatever, however long that match was, I remember just wanting to leave. It hurt so bad. It was like, it would be like if you turned the stove on and, and kept your hand on the burner. And I just remember thinking, I'm going to make myself watch this. So when I get the chance, I can, I won't have to feel this again. <laughs> sat on me for a long, 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 long time, you know, you know, I kind of had to do some reflecting and thinking about, you know, where my priorities were, so I think that's good, man, I think all those things are good and all of it leads to something, you know, it all leads to, you can use it for something. Definitely doesn't hurt for fuel for the next one. Boom, there we go, dude. A heavy I get into uh, it. I just wanted yeah. to sit here and watch it all, man. Yeah, 100%. I, I've already seen it a bunch of times, but <laughs> definitely. No, it's super, super sick piece. Um, I know you edited it, Reed. That was pretty cool. Reed dusting off the the old editor chops, huh? How did that feel? What was it? What was there anything uh I guess when you were editing it that didn't make the cut or any anything that stood out to you while you were in there mixing it up that uh that you could talk about? Man, I, I feel like a lot of it, you know, all of Jacob's run really is on on the timeline there. And, and you, you went out and did the interview with, with Jacob afterwards. And, you know, Jacob's such a easy guy to work with. Obviously, you know, he comes off so well, I think, in, in the piece. And that's just kind of who he is, to be honest. You know, he, he really genuinely loves grappling, genuinely loves, like, performing in front of the crowd and everything like that. But, like, that's that part specifically, I think, is, is such a, a good part because it really kind of, like, you know, peels the curtain back a little bit on some of these high level competitors and how they how they think and how they, um, you know, have to wait two years. Like Jacob's talking about, uh, you know, the West Coast trials from from 2022 or 2021 um, and, you know, just how much losing at that tournament really ate at him for, for months and months and those months turned into years because, you know, ADCC is, is every every other year. Right. So it's like it's not only if you don't make the cut. Do you have to wait? You have to wait two years, you know, and that can be that can be guys' entire careers. Sometimes, you know, sometimes people don't really have that longevity. Um, so for 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 Jacob to kind of like sit down there and watch uh, watch J Rod win the final at the at the uh, at that last year's ADCC trials, you know, you can really tell that it must have been eating at him, must have mm -hmm. kept him awake for for many many days. And I think that was one of the most like in impressive parts about couches run this time around is just like and we and i feel like even while we were just there at the uh at the event we all kind of saw it and we're and we're talking about it just like how present and how much fun couch looked like you, he's having you know sometimes when these guys um get nervous and, and in their heads and stuff like that you know you you can kind of see it that they're that they're not on there on the top sure. of their game but couch was out there just smiling slapping hands having fun and that really really goes a long way so to kind of get the full story of how he was able to get there you know that that, that was one of my favorite parts of it 100 percent. i think i think this uh film does a really good job of kind of like like you said, peeling back that curtain, you get you get really get to dive into like Couch's mindset throughout this run because Couch is very well spoken. He can remember every match and what he was thinking, what was going on. And obviously, we showed you uh, that little scene, which is like a kind of like a tone change type of scene. It gets heavy, you know. It's like, oh shit, okay, here comes J Rod, the the current reigning West Coast Trials champ and stuff. But there are a lot of great scenes. I know one that kind of just. It speaks to Couch's mindset a lot through this. Like you said, he's very present just in the moment. There's one where he talks about, uh, I remember asking him like, okay, wh what was your warm up for day two? Like, you yeah. know, did you get in there early? Did you get blah, blah, blah? And he said, oh, well, I think I was I was taking a piss. Yeah. And Spatchy ran up to me. This is my Couch accent. Uh, <laughs> couch sees this. Uh, I don't know. Don't beat me up. But I, <laughs> Spatchy ran up to me and he was, he was like, you're on the board. I was like, I'm on the board. I got another hour. No, you got to go now. And so I took a piss, ran out there and submitted him. Walked out of the pisser. Yeah. So that was my warm up. Couch was just like, he was just, 
I don't know. He was having fun. He yeah, was there having fun, yeah. soaking up the crowd. There's a great scene at the end of him celebrating everything. So I won't spoil it too much, but you guys need to go check it out. Honestly, go open a new tab right now if you're watching this video. Open a new tab. Go to the Flow Grappling YouTube. Pull up the video. Go down. Leave a comment. The comments are going crazy for it, so you don't want to miss out on being in that comment section. Leave a comment right now and say the ADCC update show sent you, and uh, and I'll respond to you from the Flow Grappling account. So go go open a second browser, but then continue watching this as well. Because we got another trailer for you guys. I think this is a little later on, a little more lighthearted scene here. So let's see, let's see this second trailer, just a little teaser. I am ready to be on that stage right now. Right now, I can do it. I'm telling you. I, oh, I can't wait, man. I can't wait. It's gonna be so good. I'm talking big shit, to everybody. It's big. It's real big, man. Holy shit. I didn't realize how fucking big this place was. Oh my god. It, it is so cool, man, to even think about walking on that stage in front of the people before the actual event itself is almost more exciting to me than the grappling part. Because I've grappled before. I've never gotten to be on a stage in front of that many people, you know? So, like, obviously, I love the fact that I'm getting to grapple in the world's greatest grappling tournament, duh. But just getting to be in front of so many people, man, that's like, oh, dude, I'm so excited for that. I can't fucking wait. Can't wait. All right, there you go. A little a little taste there at the end of Couch getting to see T-Mobile and everything. But there's a lot a lot of great scenes in there. I Right before that, there's probably Couch's funniest joke that I left out. So you guys got to go watch it if you want to if you want to hear that joke. I, that is that is one of my favorite parts about yeah. the, the, him fighting Gordon Ryan in the UFC game. Yeah. I, I felt like we, we almost like should recreate that. Like 100%. you have the UFC, UFC game, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, so we should like – I feel like we should – create some characters yeah. gordon and, and jacob yeah. and like that'd be pretty funny couch basically for anyone watching we won't spoil it all but go watch it it's funny but couch basically talks i asked him about being in t-mobile and he said oh yeah i've been in t-mobile i set up ufc5 i can make a creative fire yeah. make a couch yeah. gordon ryan but go go check it out it's one of the best parts but definitely a super sick film i'm super stoked on that one glad it could come out and uh and yeah, everyone should be watching it. But yeah, who, who's better than Jacob Couch, man? One of the funnest guys to be watching right now. Um, you know, obviously his his leg lock game, you know, might be kind of second to none r right now. He he's out there just leg locking everybody, and uh, you know, just one of the most well liked guys in in the sport. You know, how how can you not like Jacob Couch? He's he's out there having fun and and throwing it. You know, put it all out on the line. So what a killer! Hundred yeah, percent. It, it was a pleasure to put together. It was a fun one to put together. Definitely. Definitely. All right, Joe, you want to do a guess that grappler? Let's do a guess that, guess that grappler. Let's, Let's guess a grappler. I, th I think Reed might have got a little, he might have cheated. He might have saw, we were, cheat. we were in the back, and uh, I think the answer might have got thrown up on the screen. Did you see who it is already? I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and pull up uh, the Guess That Grappler. This puts a lot of pressure on me. All right, here we oh. go. Guess That Grappler. This is, now listen, sometimes these Looks like out, a witch. These, sometimes these become little cutie patooties, and sometimes they don't. And yeah. I don't know where this one's at. This one's a little bit in, in the middle between cutie patootie and not so cutie patootie. A little bit a, of a trog. I, I feel like one of, one of the pictures you used is a picture of a potato. For sure. It's got to be a, yeah. One, yeah. Of the, one of the pictures. This one's three. Two grapplers and a potato. <laughs> This has to be a potato. Um, no, yeah, I, I, I feel like, you know. The face looks like J-Rod. Yeah, I feel like you could see J-Rod in there. I feel like you could see J-Rod. I feel like I know what photo it is. Like, there's like a photo of him yelling. I feel like it might be J-Rod paler than I had ex expected in this photo. Well, I might have had to. Color adjust, correct. Yeah. Fair enough. Color <laughs> <a little> bit. <laughs> looks like he just saw a ghost and he's like freaked out about it. All right, I'll give you guys J-Rod. J-Rod's on the inside. It okay. I feel like you can see J-Rod in there. What definitely. about the outside? Who you guys think? After he won West Coast Trials or something like that, he's Long screaming, hair. going crazy, huh? Yep. Long hair. I feel like the hair is the giveaway. I never get these. I, I watch know. so much grappling. <laughs> I don't even know who has long hair. Who has, yeah, who long, has long hair? hair? I'll, I'll give you guys um, a hint. The, the guy on the outside is someone I would describe as like one of the, like he's kind of like an anime guy. Like Riccio Andre. No, I wish for Rico had hair like that. That'd be hilarious. But <laughs> he's, he's like it's one of the Corbes. It is one of the Corbes. Yes. All right, you're not gonna make me have to like. It's Gavin. <laughs> yeah, it's Gavin. It's Gavin. Or Gavin's Gavin? the one with long hair. I get him mixed up. Deand uh, DeAndre has shorter hair. That was Gavin a straight up coin flip. Yeah, okay. go ahead and and uh, show the show the answer there for these guys. Nice work. Way to work through that one. We got a. Uh, 
Was he from an IBJJF competition there? I think that was whenever he won Nogi Worlds. Nogi Worlds. And, uh, and this Man. is J-Rod after winning West Coast Trials last year. So obviously a pretty historic moment in the sport. J-Rod. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was nuts. Yeah, I remember that belt. photo. Of, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got, got his purple belt on the mat from Craig. I mean, yeah. that was so sick, dude. Running over and celebrating. Yeah, and that was, it, was, it, it helped seeing this only moments before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn it. Yeah, you but, know, it was like um, such a coming out party for J-Rod because, you know, obviously Nicky Rod had had, a, had you know, hit his coming out parties at ADCC and everybody knew Nicky Rod, but nobody really knew J Rod just, just yet. Not the kind of larger mm -hmm. zeitgeist of Nicky's um, brother. Yeah, He's yeah, just yeah. Nicky's brother. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And then he went out I and mean, I think it was seven for seven as well, or eight for yep. eight. I think he might've been eight for eight. eight for eight. I remember. Yeah. Cause I was like, damn eight, dude. Yeah. I don't know. Something about just bumping from seven to eight is kind of crazy. But. Yeah. Yeah. And then his final submission there was like a buggy, buggy choke, but, but the fist in the throat kind of like, like a punch choke variation with the buggy on Hunter yeah, Colvin. That was a legendary one. That that was such a legendary performance. That one's going down in the history books. And but that's what West Coast Trials does. That's what these trials does. Like it it gives guys opportunities to really show deep down who they are. And we learned that J Rod is deep down a dog. All, 100%, all team dude. first dog. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, there's always like every single one of these trials and like every big tournament for sure. But for some reason it just feels different for trials because it's like it's so validating, you know, someone who, cause it's like, all right, the medalists are already at ADCC. They don't have to go prove that they deserve to be at the world championship. But these guys who are like, shit, man, maybe I'd get an invite if Mo, you know, like likes what I'm doing or whatever, but like to go there and then have this crazy run, punch your ticket. It, it feels like just the most validating thing in the sport to me. Like the ultimate, like, oh shit, no one can argue that Jacob Couch doesn't deserve to be in the conversation yeah. with the best grapplers in the world. No one can argue that J-Rod doesn't deserve to be in that conversation now that he's uh, won trials before, you know? And so obviously here at West Coast Trials, we're going to see some new some new people uh, punch their ticket, eight new people specifically punch their ticket and kind of validate themselves in the grappling world. But you guys want to go through, preview these divisions a little bit? Yeah, what, what do you think? I mean, you guys have been to a bunch of them. You know, we're, we're kind of wrapping up the trials here. We have West Coast and then one more Asian trials here. But, I mean, we have to say kind of West, West Coast is probably the hardest trials to this win. Is, I think this so, is the yeah. number one. Right? This is it, right? right. 100%. Yeah. With Obviously, the, With the women getting their invite, too. So all the women's divisions are packed. Nothing against East Coast. I've, nothing against South America. But, like, man, North American trials is just the toughest. And West Coast is a little tougher than mm -hmm. East Coast. Yeah. I think I, re I remember some stats on this. Not the specific stats, but just that the stats exist. Yeah. You know, as a smooth brain guy like me general, does. General. Yeah. That's, that's how you roll whenever you're just, like, the smooth brain guy. You just remember <laughs> stats exist, but not what the stats are Corey would know the exact stats yeah but I remember him talking about I think because he might have punched the numbers and done an article previously where I think if you base it on East Coast trials and then how those people performed at the world championship East Coast does to, is technically the hardest in the in the theory that Cade Ruotolo and John Carlo mm -hmm. both won right. last year's East Coast trial or yeah, the last true. cycle's East Coast trials and then went on to win the world championship itself so I don't know there's a little something to be said there to just for a fun, you know, trials debate yeah. of like, all right, technically is East Coast the toughest because we, we, you like a few of those guys won't be competing at West Coast because they already won. But it still feels to me, I think maybe because of the gravity of the situation that it's like, bro, if you don't win this, you're not going to ADCC Worlds. A little bit more like, finite. Yeah. It like makes it feel like it's like a tougher, more like everyone's there to like, like going to fight to tooth and nail to the last second. And I also think it just creates some of the craziest moments of any of the trials. Like it seems like, like I feel like there's a laundry list of West Coast trials moments from the most recent West Coast trials that we could like run through. Like, yeah. like a good one that I love talking about is Devante taking that guy off the mat. The Harris and Devante Johnson, yeah. Or, not, even, or, not even that one, the, the one where the ref stopped it. Or didn't stop it? Is that yeah. the one you're talking about? Yeah, oh, I'm, okay, okay. Okay. Yes, I'm yeah. keeping this. Yeah, I'm yeah. keeping this. Oh, I'm yeah. keeping this. Yeah. yeah. Basically, these guys, like, they just kind of agree that they were done. And the ref was like, no, no, no. Keep yeah. going. He's like, okay. And he just throws him on his head. And he's like, oh, I'm keeping that now. And the ref's like, you got it. On you got it. On the yeah. carpet. Yeah. yeah. Which, like, dude, that ref kind of buckled a little bit. No offense. He was just like, you got it. You got it to Devontae. <laughs> but, like, who won? If Devontae's yelling at you that he's keeping this now, it's like, yeah, that's yours, Devontae. Yeah, some I mean, people take and some give, and he takes. Keith Krikorian's performance there was incredible last time. Um, Andrew and Damien. Andrew and Damien. Um, J. Rod William Tackett, uh, you know, looked awesome at 77. 
Yeah, no. Some unreal stuff. Comes uh, out Big of, Dan, uh, of course, he he punched his ticket last time at, at West Coast Trials. So No, Kyle Bain beat Big Dan. Oh, that's right. You're totally yeah. right. You're totally right. Kyle and Bain. Big Dan had to do it at uh, Europeans. Europeans. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. All right. Well, let's go ahead. Let's j- jump into uh, some division previews. We'll start out with uh, the women's division. We can go minus, 90, or minus 55 uh, first for some different uh, looks here. And so I just kind of, I took a quick screen grab of just the top of the registrations. Obviously these are, I don't, I don't look too much into these rankings. Anybody watching at home? I think these are based on smooth comp, like points. Like tournaments you've done in there yeah. in the smooth comp system so, before. So I that think. can include like, obviously it includes the opens now a lot, which probably does impact. You maybe should consider that, but it can also be other things too. So this isn't like the finite rankings, but just a few names to look at. But let's think, put it this way. I don't think Gordon Ryan has very many smooth comp. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. Probably get the one. hundred percent. But, uh, and yeah, this has nothing to do with how it's going to be seated at trials itself, but just something to look at here. And then there's more people obviously we'll talk about, but the, the two people I think you got to talk about off the rip, Alex Enriquez, and Jasmine Hosha. So Alex Enriquez won East coast trials and Jasmine Hosha kind of hasn't put it together and got the dub yet but she's just always there always competing so active i kind of feel like that could potentially be a final not to overlook all the other women in this division because it is stacked but that's just like to me the first two names i feel like you got to talk about what do you kind of think what do you think joe you got any takes on this one i think alex enriquez is having the best year plus of her career winning uh east coast trials winning no gi worlds uh looking really good as she's doing it i think she's really kind of figured everything out and has risen to the top of this division. But yeah, I think like you said, Jasmine, we're just kind of waiting on her to really put it all together. Right. I think people can see the potential there for her to be world champion for her to, you know, just blow everybody away at trials potentially. Uh, but after seeing her at South American trials, it is a question of like, is there just always going to be like the bad style matchup for Jasmine that sort of gets in the way or is she going to kind of do the couch thing where it's like, no style matchup matters anymore. I'm just going to kill everybody. Yeah. I, yeah. I feel like she's going to break through eventually. I, I don't know if it's this time, like, because Alex Enriquez is hard to bet against. They have experience, you know, but just feels like some people are due. What, what do you think, Reed? What about Yeah, you? no, I, I mean, I think this year we've been watching a lot of Jasmine, um, you know, and, and or even last year, too. We watched a lot of Jasmine. She was on Who's Number One and everything like that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Jasmine's really climbing the ranks and to be kind of like, well, you know, one of my favorite competitors, to be honest. I just I love that. I love her style. She's just kind of, you know, obviously a little bit like her father in, in that she's just a bruiser. And then she just kind of throws caution to the wind and, and, and goes forward. And, and you know, you definitely got to appreciate that style um alex enrique has a little bit more finesse style you, you know um and she's she's a lot of fun to watch too so yeah i have to agree that, that that definitely looks like two of the heaviest hitters in that division i saw a couple others i saw ufc fighter angela hill w- w- yeah. was signed up Crazy. so that's, that's hill that's pretty cool T- Tammy. Tammy musameki we got to throw out as a dark horse real quick mm-hmm. right she could win sure. you know 100 multiple time ibjjf black belt no nogi world champion uh one of the most technical in the division doesn't compete too often. Uh, and, and we don't see her popping up, but we're going to see her here. And I think it's really exciting to have a Musumeki taking the ADCC challenge Yeah, in Vegas. Right. Sure. So she, she's living in Vegas. So I wonder, I bet, I bet Mikey will be in her corner, um, coaching her up, you know, and I think that T- Tammy's always, you know, a very, very good competitor, but when she has Mikey, in her corner she just levels up like sure. like like three four times i feel like you know i feel like she just does not want, like to disappoint her brother and, no, and so not. she she you know tries so hard to win so yeah i, I agree tammy could <sighs> definitely be a, be a dark horse in there 100 percent. going back going back to the the rocha family real quick should i tell a quick little uh I guess a side of something I heard Wagner saying in the corner you got a good rocha story i don't even know if it's a good rocha story it's just like obviously Wagner is it he loves to talk you know what i mean that's like like i feel like most of the battle when fighting wagner hosha is like the mental warfare he does and how good he is at it any any edge he can he can get he's trying to get 100 trying to give his daughter or his son and with that like he carries that over to his kids as competition so both when achilles and jasmine are competing he's always in the corner he's always so boisterous so loud whether he's like talking to the ref talking to the opponent talking to anybody and like, I don't know, this is a little inappropriate, but like, it's still, it's like, I've been holding it in and I just want to tell it so bad because it's such a, fun, it. it's such a funny thing for someone to say at, uh, South American trials, second trials, 
it's Achilles Hosha versus Andre Porfirio. Mm. So big match. Used yeah. to be teammates. Andre's now in a different team. Um, and this is someone that obviously Wagner <laughs> knows a lot and stuff and probably knows how to mess with him, get in his head, all that stuff. Whatever, put that aside. So there's a moment where Andre has Achilles in a pretty like dead to right straight ankle lock. Like for any guy like us, like glass ankle boy over here. We're, I mean, <laughs> we're probably, ta- yeah. Who are you talking to? Whoa, whoa. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I got tapped to a straight ankle the other day. So whatever, I can't talk. But it's like most people are like, dude, get me out of here. But Achilles just eating it like these guys do, you know? And so he starts like, Andre goes belly down. He starts kind of putting his foot up, you know, and pushing down. And his foot's kind of in Andre's butt a little bit, like, which is whatever that happens. And Wagner just goes, oh, yeah, he likes that shit right in his ass. <laughs> and I just remember, like, I'm sitting there filming, and I just, like, look at him. And I'm like, did Wagner really just say that, bro? Like, this guy is so off the rails <laughs> whenever he starts coaching. He will literally say anything he thinks will gain any sort of the minutest like advantage to like his athlete competing. <laughs> this dude literally is just like trying to mess with Andre, obviously. <laughs> like, oh yeah, that's just he likes it like that. And I'm like, I'm sitting there thinking. Your like, thing bro, to say to your son. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, bro, this is your son, dude. Like, what are you talking about? Like, what's saying? This, I'm so uncomfortable right now. I got like Jasmine sitting next to me, her dad right there, their yeah, mom. Yeah. Like, and I'm like, why did you just say that, Wagner? But I'm also like, Mad it's respect. It's because yeah. Wagner's wild, man. That was I, a sick thing to say. You know say. why? Because he wants Andre to think, like, what are you talking about? You know, he wants Anything him to have this exact conversation in yeah. the middle of the fight. Yeah, I would I would not do well um, competing against the Roaches, I feel no. like. It, it, like, no, if Wagner was in the opposite corner yeah. coaching against me, I, I would not do well. I, <laughs> no, dude, no way. And, like, even because Achilles isn't afraid to talk while he's competing, yeah. Jasmine's talking, too. It's like, dude, whenever you fight one of the Roaches, it's like you have the whole family. You got to fight the Just whole like, family. Yeah. yeah. And, like, and going back to Jasmine, like Jasmine is, I, I love watching Jasmine compete. Yeah. I love seeing her like before she competes, you know, like the bravado. She, she looks has. like she's having fun yes, too. You know, another person who's she's dancing. She's having yep. fun. She, dude, she'll come over and like, obviously we're always filming and stuff. So she'll come over and just, you don't have to say anything. She'll start talking to your camera. She'll be like, we're a whole family of people who beat people's ass. You don't want to mess with, you know, stuff like that. I'm like, damn, dude, that's pretty sick. Freaking. Put your finger, put your toes in his butt, you know, like so. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Too, but, we'll probably cut this part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, dude. Honestly, though, I've been holding on to that, and I've been like waiting to get to talk about that. It's a weird thing, but just such a funny thing yeah. for Wagner to say. And I was like, dude, mad respect. Yeah. Willing to go there, but uh, but yeah, there's a little, there's a little Rocha story for you guys. Who, so who else is in the fifty five? <laughs> I, I will say uh, who else we have in the fifty five. But before that, we do have Jasmine coming up on who's number one. We just announced that. Uh, oh, true. Yeah. Very recently taking on Emily Fajera. That's Super a great Dope match. Fight. That is sick. Yeah, we'll do we'll, we'll do a little W and O preview towards the, at the end after we get the division, so we can talk about that. But yeah, that's a sick one. That one just dropped. While we're, while we're talking about, it, we also have in minus fifty five Amanda Bruce, world silver medalist Jesse Crane, Cindy Ung, Trinity Pun, Faye Sherrier, who was top four last trials, Alex Nguyen, who I'm really excited about making a return, has been off for a while. I feel like. Sophia Casella, Maggie Meyer, Lauren Sears. This division is packed. So many, so many game competitors. I know I was talking to Corey a little bit about this uh, last week, and we were talking about, like, you know, man, what division is the most stacked? And he was like, dude, I think minus 55 is in the running for wow. most stacked. Wow. You, when you start listing those names, it really does kind of sink in, like, holy shit. Like, yeah, we can sit here and talk a lot about Jasmine and Alex and, like, whoever, but, like, man, someone like Trinity Pun. She trains at New Wave, you know, super game. She could have a run. Yeah. Sophia Casella yeah. could have a run. Like yeah. all these Jessie girls. Crane, there's there's going to be world class women at fi- 55 who don't make the trials quarters. Yeah. Right. Just because we have too many. 100%. All right. So for sake of time, yeah, obviously, we can't talk about every single athlete. We're trying to do a big general preview. So we apologize if we miss your favorite athlete or miss talking about you. We do. We, we know we know who's out there. We're thinking about you guys, but we can't cover everyone in the show. Let's move to minus 65 women's division. I think the the top girls in this one probably got to be Helena Cravar and Mo Black, right? The finals from from East Coast Trials is who who I would probably say right 100%. off the rip. Mm-hmm. Um, I think obviously it's hard to bet against Mo Black. She proved she already did it, but I think a big thing about this, to in my opinion, that's going to be fun to watch is can Helena close the gap and fix the mistakes she made at East Coast? You know what I mean? So I, she got a negative, right? She got a negative in the finals. Uh, I think she was trying to do that guard pull after you Eight. shoot gimmick. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. but it wasn't quite there on the execution. Yeah. Mo was ahead of her on that and uh, got the dub. They are lifetime one and one against each other. They met at Fight to Win, I'm pretty sure it was, uh, a little bit back. And 
Helena was able to win by submission. Mo, once they put the uh, Mo uh, uh, Black, once they put the rules of ADCC on, was able to navigate and strategize ahead of her and stay safe. And uh, I think that's going to be the game, right? Can Helena force enough positions, enough scrambling, enough jujitsu? to have to draw Mo into that a little bit more? Can Mo kind of surf and, and navigate the fight? For sure. I think, so the the interesting aspect of this to me, that's like just like a fun, as a grappling fan, a fun thing to kind of see and watch is we obviously know who Helena trains with, who's in her corner, who's coaching her. She got John Danaher, like probably outright the best coach oh, yeah. in jujitsu. Yeah. Yeah. You know I mean? I don't think, any, like I think yeah, everyone would agree with that. Yeah. And with that, he's a guy who specifically targets and they train for ADCC almost all the time. Like that is their number one objective is ADCC. And along with that, that team is also very good at the like, okay, we're in the finals now. The rules are different. I can't pull, but I have to overcome that, not get the negative and still get to play my guard, play my game. And I think John is going to obviously, after seeing Helena kind of make the oopsies, at East Coast and get the negative, it's like, all right, let's fix that. You know what I mean? Like, so I do, I feel like that's something where John's going to work specifically with Helena to overcome that. And so if we do get to see Helena go that far in the tournament and like a potential rematch or just someone who is a game wrestler, or maybe Helena's going to come out with nasty wrestling. I don't know. She's young. She can probably progress incredibly fast, especially in that room. I just think that's like such a fun little thing to like get to watch and be like, all right, did they fix it? Like, uh, let's yeah. see what's going yeah. on. Here. I don't think Helena will make that same mistake twice. You know, I, especially in the finals, she was, she was so, so close you know, obviously she's so young still, um, you know, so I, yeah, I, I agree. I don't think that's a mistake that she's going to make twice, you know, but you know, Mo Black's not going to lay over obviously. And she sure. definitely is the more physical grappler. Um, so that'll be a fun, fun rematch just to see, you know, and I think anytime you, you see Helena out there, you can see her progression. Um, that's always a treat. So th this should be a fun division as well. The well, one thing that's going to do though, is it is going to give the rest of those competitors kind of the roadmap. To yeah. beat Helena, you know what I mean? Where they're all going to look at the match and say, and it was probably the idea a lot of people had before, right? It's like force it into the overtime, force some wrestling and see what you can make happen. Uh, but it's going to give them a lot more confidence when they come out and attack her. And so I think that she is going to a little bit of the aura that Helena had coming into East Coast where it was like, she's just killing everybody, you know, nobody can last with her. I feel like that got dented a little and she's going to have to reprove that if she wants that. I, th I think I agree with you, but. I think it also kind of applies a lot only in the like forced wrestling situation. You know what I mean? Like, so when she can immediately come out and sit and big like, difference. and then big it's difference. like, all right, you can come at Helena if you want, but like big difference. Uh, that's yeah. So I don't know, but uh, another name in the mix, Aaron Harp, right? Aaron Harp's in at uh, minus 65. If I'm not mistaken, she, she's someone who she went to plus 65. Oh, she went to plus 65. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. We'll, we'll hold off on there. <laughs> we'll, we'll hold off. But yeah. I mean, I think we'll, we'll see what type of uh, competitor, you know, Helena really is, to be honest. You, sure. you know, it's um, one thing to kind of just be cruising downhill, winning all the time. But when you got a target on your back and, and girls are developing strategies to, to how to beat you and things like that, then, you know, you really got to, you got to rise to the occasion. So we'll, we'll really see what, what Helena is made of probably at this tournament. For sure. Joe, who else who else got on the list over there at uh, under 65? Anybody, any names we should specifically shout out, talk a little bit about? Sure. Shout out Leilani Bernales, uh, Ashlyn O'Connell, Caitlin Huggins, Nicole Matthew, Brittany Johnson, Molly Zabrowski, uh, just to name a few. For sure. So another stack division. I mean, that's kind of like, that's just how the cookie crumbles at West Coast Trials. Every division is stacked. But let's go ahead and move up to the, the final women's division, plus 65. I kind of already... Leaked one name there, oopsies, uh, right. Aaron Harp. I think it's going to be exciting seeing Aaron Harp back in the mix. Haven't seen her compete since, I don't know when, to be honest. I remember, obviously, she was at Who's Number One Championship, but that was 2021. Don't know particularly if she had a big competition since then. Maybe yeah. so, might just be seen too much her. of her, to be honest. So, right. yeah, we were always big fans of Aaron. We ha had her kind of early on um, on Who's Number One matches. She had a lot of really, really exciting matches there, especially at the, the championships and stuff. So glad to see that she's she's back in the mix. This really is her first uh, uh, checking BJJ Heroes. This is her first competition, really, since uh, who's number one championships. I think she's been kind of focused on getting a gym up and running. And, uh, you know, we see some people have to step away for a extended period of time for that. Uh, but, yeah, she's a threat to beat anybody. Anybody we've seen that, right? And sure. she's such a scrapper. It's going to be really exciting. She's a really fun addition 
to this trials. Definitely. Who who else we got in the mix at uh, plus sixty five? You got the registration. Sure. Amanda Levy, who I consider the favorite. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, definitely. Uh, Bridget McKelsey, Elizabeth Mitrovic, who won a Nogi World title uh, last year. Uh, Kadaya Peak, Hannah Harjo, Brittany Elkin, Jada Mueller, just to name some. Mm. Nice. Yeah, Amanda Levy is fun to watch, and, yeah. and she's got to be the favorite going in here. Obviously, she won uh, East Coast Trials, but she's a girl who just throws submissions, flying arm bars, you know, a bunch of flying submissions and stuff like that. So, Amanda, very, very exciting to watch. She's got that MMA grit to her now, you know? Yeah, like When yeah. people start making that crossover to MMA – training more MMA, competing MMA, they just kind of get meaner. Like, it's like, that's what, like, the Tackett said about Cody Steele and stuff. You know, it's like, he's just hey, meaner he's now. the same guy, he's just a little meaner. You know, it's <laughs> like, like, I feel like to, to do MMA and do well at it, you got to have a little more of that uh, grit. You know, in jiu-jitsu, we can... We can just lay down when we're tired, and you know, so that is nice. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, that's why I like it. But <laughs> that's why I'm not, you know, I'm working on my guard now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think this round I'm gonna work my guard a little bit. You know? a half butterfly, <laughs> basically laying down on my elbow. Yeah, hundred percent. But so yeah, Amanda kind of brings that that tenacity, a little bit of that uh, tenacious energy with her that I feel like a lot of MMA people do. Um, Jaden Mueller is another one. Obviously, Tom DeBlast student. Jaden Mueller's super good. Uh, I think she could be exciting. I always like watching her her half guard game. She has a lot of that Tom DeBlas half guard, and yeah, she's I, been I like the game for half a, guard as well. So it's she's fun been to watch. in the game for a long, long time now, and she's still so young. Um, so she she's kind of waiting for for her big big breakout moment, and um, you know, have for her to go to ADCC would be a huge feather in her cap, obviously. So for sure. All right, you want to bump up to yeah. minus sixty six first men's division. All right, let's talk about the under sixty six kilogram division. So, like I said already, these women's divisions are stacked, the men's division are stacked, every division stacked. Maybe we should have freaking just had a debate on which is the most stacked division for an hour. That would have been kind of fun. But this 66 kilogram division, when you start looking at these names and you kind of get in the weeds and you start realizing other little names you missed and everything, this division is so sick, dude. Like just off the rip, both Corbe brothers, I feel like are are dudes you got to talk about. These guys we're going to talk about a lot of people. I don't even know if they're the number one favorite, maybe. But the Corbe brothers, to me, are like, these dudes feel like they're just due, you know? That's where it's I'm like, at. They get, they get the two-for-one special. It's kind of like that that Roots special. Uh, it's the Roots played at, at Aipono Cafe. Yeah, you know? you get the two. One. Yeah, yeah, which if you hadn't had that, go get that. That's, yeah, that'll definitely. change your life if you're in Costa Mesa. Yeah. But uh, you get that two-for-one. It's two brothers, one division. Obviously, it's like one gets taken out. All right, no worries. I got I to gotta pick it up put both of us on my back and and get it done for the two of them so those guys just they feel like they're due to me a little bit i don't know yeah yeah definitely corby brothers are, are out there you know killing it i feel like I, I still haven't seen them kind of get over that hump of uh of elite grapplers i know nogi world champions i believe one of them is and either nogi no, no nogi they pants, pants. pants. okay yeah, from earlier pants. Was pants gotcha and, uh DeAndre, I think, has taken silver twice. Yeah, you're right. So I, so I, so I feel like they're, st- they're, st- they're still working to get over that that elite hump where you got guys like, you know, Johnny Grippo and C- Keith Krikorian in there, uh, ADCC veteran Richard Alicorn, um, you know, so so there's definitely still a, a top kind of tier of, of guys that, I, that I've that i Yet to see the Corbet brothers beat to it, and you know, not to say that they can't. Obviously, I've seen some incredible jujitsu from these guys. Super exciting. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I'm just waiting for that time to see them kind of beat that upper echelon uh, of competitor. But I think it, until then, I feel like Keith Krikorian's kind of got to be the, the one of the, one of the, the main guys we're, we're looking at here to, to win. At least for me. Yeah, I th- I think if I had to put money. I would probably bet on Keith Krikorian. Especially last, last weekend, I yeah. believe he had a really good weekend. Yeah, he had a match on Polaris. He fought Cam Donnelly, which Cam Donnelly, obviously super game dude, B-team guy. And uh, he ended up getting the armbar finish in that, if I'm pretty sure. Yep. Armbar, yeah. And Keith just looked sick. He just looked like a beast, you know? Yeah. And I think Keith's a guy, like, if he gets in the right headspace and he's having fun, yeah. then it's like, dude, he's hard to beat. And, and he's still he had so a, experienced in ADCC as well. And he had a great... Uh, ADCC East Coast Trials tournament as well. I believe he got third or third or fourth there. Mm-hmm. I can't remember exactly, um, but he had a great tournament. You know there. who he lost to? Um, if, if I remember, he lost. You remember to, Joe? I remember. Um, no, it I wasn't e- Ethan and Dorian was the one. Was the one, and then who and else was in the finals at East Coast Trials? And then the other one versus Dorian. I uh, was. Uh, I think it was Dom, right? Dom Mejia. Was it? Oh, was it Dom? Okay. Did. did so Dom, Dom was on a tear that right. tournament. Yeah, hundred so, percent. So that's that's a good segue because Dom ended up getting the win over Keith, but then 
also took out both Corbes, right? Or, or yeah, did no. one of the Corbes take out Keith? No, he took out both Corbes. Okay. Okay, yeah. No, but did the Corbes take out Keith? No, no. Keith plays okay. fourth. He lost to Dominic Mejia gotcha. in the semifinals. Okay. Then he lost to Ethan for third. So, yeah, Dom Mejia, insane run at yeah, East Coast. So, to take out Keith and both Corbe bros is kind of insane. I know... I know Dom and the Corbett Bros have like a little ADCC open rivalry. You know, they they uh, have fought a lot. And, you know, Greg gave Dom the the you are the man today uh, speech after beating the Corbett Bros, which is kind of sick. Yeah. Uh, I was like, told him you're the man now, dog. Yeah, that was a, that was a cool little moment. Um, so, yeah, I think Dom, he is another guy in the mix. Yeah, Dom's got, got that swag to him, yeah. you know, that, that kind of like F you swag mm-hmm. um, where like if, if he when he's on and, and he's out there and he's feeling himself like, yeah, he's not a guy you, you want to compete against. I, I think he's short haired Dom now, too. Oh, yeah. How do you think that is? Damn, locked him? in. No braids? I, I can't remember for sure, but or I don't know for sure, but I thought I saw a video. They have like some tap house or something that like Big Dan is building out. And it's like all these like new wave uh team members and stuff you know like the younger guys i think they're building like a like a fighter house called the tap house and i thought i saw a video of dom where he was doing something like i think they were pepper spraying each other so i don't know what's nice. going on that's i don't right. know what's going yep, on at this tap house bro <laughs> but but i kind of want to get in there and i kind of want to stay away i can't i can't decide <laughs> if i want to venture into the tap house but i'm pretty sure he had short hair but i don't know do you think that little bit of a What's the religious guy who lost his powers whenever you cut his hair, like Solomon or something? A little bit of King Solomon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You think there's a Solomon energy? <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> no, Samson. There's yeah, a little Samson. bit of that Samson. for sure. Samson, there it is. All right, <laughs> Samson. Yeah. All right. Who, who else? We're going to find out. I feel like if Big Dan, if I trusted him to build a house, he would build it too big. <laughs> yeah. Just everything's like slightly it's oversized. Like, like not 20% where it's like, larger, like all the door frames and stuff. 100%, like, dude. Yeah, just I was building a house. What are you yeah. talking about? Like, like not where you like walk in and notice it, but you're just like pulling out a drawer and you're like, I don't know, man. Something feels weird about our kitchen. Just everything's <laughs> slight, like two inches too tall. You it's know? like a Goldilocks house <laughs> for, the, for the largest bear. Like. 100%, dude. That would be so funny. <laughs> oh. Where are we? Uh, uh, 66. Oh, yeah. Any any other names we're missing? Well, I saw a bunch of veterans in there. You know, I saw the, the legend Barrett Yoshida. Barrett Yoshida, Hall of Famer. Yeah. 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 Barrett yeah. Yoshida. It's so I, I saw, um, who else? Uh, Gio Martinez. Gio Martinez. Freakazoid, the legend there. Awesome. Um, was that, was he this might not win, but he will do something that is, like, awesome. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Man. No matter what. There's a lot of guys like that where you could look at him and it's like, I feel like I'm not going to pick you to win it. Maybe you will and shock me. What do I know? But uh, you're at least going to do something in, like, the second round that's like, oh, my God, did you just see Geo just the, did the ADCC's, freakiest thing I've ever seen? ADCC is better when you got the 10th Planet crew in, in that's there. That's what I was going to say, know? dude. So, so, you know, hopefully, yeah, Keith or, 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 or Geo or somebody in there, um, that'd be awesome. 10th Planet crew, for sure, they roll heavy as well to these trials. Like, Eddie's gonna, Eddie Bravo is going to be, like, somewhere in the mix freaking yelling. You're going to hear his voice just randomly pop up, and there's going to be, like, a little crowd of guys, you know. Um, not just 66, but in all the divisions there, I guess there's some more guys we'll talk about, but is, is there anyone else we're missing 66 Joe before we move on? I know we got to, we time restraints, we got to keep moving, but I don't want to miss anyone. Obviously a couple guys I'll mention world finalist, AJ Agasarm, of course, going to be in the mix. Another guy who you feel like, uh, you know, maybe doesn't win it, but does some cool stuff. Uh, that's honestly crazy. If, J- if AJ can make 66 these days, you know? bro, he made it at, uh, East coast too. Uh, uh, I think he did 77 at East Coast. Oh, he though. might have done 77. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did 77 at East Coast. Uh, Damian Anderson, Demon Hands. Got to throw a little love Demon to Hands. Demon Hands. Oh, Damian's back. Uh-oh, okay, Demon cool. Hands. And then uh, Fabian Ramirez, new black belt Fabian Ramirez. Shout, Shout out, out Fabian. Fabian. He's, been, he's been having an incredible run this yep. this year. I feel like he had a great run at East Coast and just got his black belt. So, yeah. There's a there's a young kid who trains with Fabian, uh, Josh Flores, I believe is. Yeah, that kid's tough. That, he came down to South American Trials. He ended up in the second trials he lost to Fabricio, which like, Man, Fabricio's run at South yeah, American Trials. Unreal. Fire. But this kid, I think he's 16 years old. Re- like, good wrestler, scrappy kid. Like, he's really fun to watch. So so keep an eye on Fabian, but also keep an eye on this Josh Flores kid. He's, mm. he's been kind of a dude I've been trying to watch more and more now, get to know more about. He seems like a fun dude kind of coming up on the circuit. Yeah, that, there's definitely like eight, nine guys who feel like who could win. Um, well, let's, let's, let's look at who was in the finals at East Coast. It was Dorian Oliveras and Dominic Mejia. Try to find anyone who predi- predicted yeah. either of them, to be honest, in the 100%. finals. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So this, yeah, this is just going to be a total uh, chaos. Yeah, and I, I'm sure we might even find a kind of like a new Dorian Olive- Oliveras type. Sure. Or something, you know, that 66 division it always is super young. So, yeah, we'll see. All right, let's bump up to uh, the 77 kilo division this one's crazy yeah this honestly, one's absolutely bananas always one of the most stacked divisions um 77 but 
I mean, here at West Coast Trials, it's already capped out. Just some unreal names. This screenshot can't even really do it justice, to be honest, of all the names in it. But just off the rip here, you see names like John Combs, Oliver Taza, Andy Varela in the mix, Pierre Leclerc, uh, Michael Liera. I mean, I don't know. I don't know where to go. I know Majid's in now as well. Dude, like, wow. so he's Andrew always Tackett. Fun. Andrew Tackett. Uh, Andrew man. Tackett, bro. Andrew Tackett's probably got to be like the, the, the guy to keep your eye on in this one. Just, but, we have, but we haven't seen him in a while. Right. So, and injured. Yeah, he's been he's been out of commission. So he at uh, the WNO welterweight Grand Prix, he had an unreal match with PJ, where both those guys basically freaking sold their soul and died yeah, by the end of yeah. it. Just incredible to watch two dudes willing to do that. Going back to the like, it's jujitsu. You can just lay down, bro. If I ever got that tired while doing jujitsu. I would just go lay in the parking lot and throw up. I would, I would not continue. Like, but you know that's why I'm over here doing the media thing. Yeah, when we when we say jujitsu is easy, we're not talking about yeah. Jay Barches and, and Andrew, Andrew Tackett, Tackett matches. Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, so so he uh, Andrew hurt his back from that, and he's been kind of out of commission for a while now. He didn't end up being able to do the championship match with Nika, which is like hopefully one day yeah. we can run that. You know, fingers crossed we see that. And but, you missed East Coast trials because of it too. Yeah, so, so really really excited to see Andrew come back you know he had one you know if not the most exciting uh match of of uh east of uh, west coast trials last, last time against damian anderson he's bumping up now to that 77 weight class which mm-hmm. is a really good weight class for him but man there are so many guys in yeah. there Majid, john Cohen. Man, this is going to be oliver taza's i believe fourth yep fourth trials that he's going to be doing Dude, um, imagine if we get to see andrew tackett and andy varela meet yeah, like, uh, like that match is gonna be insane, bro. Andy Varela, they're out of bounds, bad boys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just great wrestling, just nonstop scrambles. You know, that was gonna be crazy. Andy Varela's always posting wild stuff on his Instagram stories too. I rec- recommend following him just because it's pretty funny. Like he'll just, it'll be like the morning, and he'll just be like, "On my way to training, feel like biting a dude's ear off today. We'll see how it goes." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like Jesus Christ, yeah, bro. Yeah. I can imagine training with I'm this. Skip how'd it go? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Get him up yeah. later. But so, Andy Varela, another guy, obviously. Renee uh, Souza in the mix, an- another out of bounds bad boy. Yeah, <laughs> he's sure. been on fire. So, so many dope. On Satava, ADCC yep. veteran, Max Hansen, Max Hansen uh, in the mix. Kyle Chambers. I don't that know. How, crazy. I don't know how he's going to make seventy-seven. Legitimately, a very large eighty-eight. Yeah, dropping yeah. down to seventy-seven. No, Kyle Chambers is a huge dude. He's on, he's got to get so shredded if he gets down to seventy. Yeah. Like I can't yeah. I can't picture what a seventy-seven kilo Kyle Chambers looks like. But I mean, obviously, I think he's so tall, such long limbs that I think he would be a problem. For a lot of dudes at 77, I don't know. Would love to see the Andrew Tackett, Kyle Chambers rematch from from who's uh, from True. who's next on the ADCC mats this time. That'd be crazy. But man, I mean, you know, we're talking about 66 being stacked. This one might be twice as stacked. I feel like that. You yeah. know, Andy Varela, all these guys just got a lot of swag. Uh, this can be a fun, fun division. And whoever comes out of this of this bracket here like for sure has a chance to win ADC definitely in my opinion whoever comes out of this one at least there are are so many good guys for sure all right so there's there's another name I saw in the mix I want to bring up Uh, an OG dude a legend of the sport in my opinion Bill the Grill Cooper yeah just just because this this guy I've heard so many crazy stories about this guy Reed you got any Bill the Grill stories you could uh tell us about Bill Cooper it's for for there's probably some young members watching you know some young members of the fans uh, out there blue belts purple belts maybe they don't know build a grill it was kind of like b team before b team a little bit. yeah a little bit of yeah. like spiritually give them yeah. give them a taste of what build a grill cooper <laughs> no, i wish i had some some real firsthand good good build a grill um stories for you you know he he definitely was pretty active on the the fight to win scene when i when i was f- first starting and stuff and i remember kind of fight to win three or four maybe out there in san francisco um, he was on and, and man, yeah, he just had an incredible performance out there and he's just the life of, the, of a party type of guy, you know, like he's just out there partying, he's break dancing, he's doing his thing. Um, he's in that Jeff Glover crew. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. like, he's like linked up with those guys, Paragon guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, and of course the, the, the legendary story of, of him, uh, you know, basically kind of losing out on, on his, on a world championship on an IBJJF black belt world championship, uh, because he wasn't wearing underwear and, yeah. and yeah, refused to put any on. So that's, that's kind of just kind of sums up. I feel like who built this Bill guy the grill is not only did build the grill Cooper decide, and this is just a story I've heard, obviously yeah, yeah. like a legend of the sport. Not only did he decide not to wear underwear when going out to compete at the world championship, but when the referee was like, no, realized it was like, no, you have to wear underwear. He was like, 
I'm not doing. Well, I don't think he had underwear. I just don't think he had it. <laughs> it's just like it's impossible. I yeah, can't do yeah. It. He just was like, well, I don't have any underwear. Oh, imagine like you know sometimes you got like freaking oh my gi ripped, dude. Can I use your gi? It's still sweaty from your match, but that's disgusting. But I got to do it. Imagine going over to your boy <laughs> and being like, hey, bro, this is. Hey man, this is a yeah. this is a tough talk, but yeah. I need those undies. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah. sure, no problem. It's just it's <laughs> yeah. like it's yeah. like totally yeah, normal. To him. You find out your boy's hey, way too down. If, if you guys need some undies and you guys are in the world finals, I'll I'll, I'll lend you mine for sure. Yeah, for sure. come ask. Actually, honestly, dude, yeah, you can come to me. We're we're staying at the Westgate too. <laughs> so it's the vents at the Westgate. I'll run back to my room, grab a pair of undies. I'll bring an extra pair of spider undies for you guys. The good stuff, yeah. and, and I'll hook you up. It's, actually, that offer is not for everyone. That's only for Bill the Grill Cooper. Yeah. Now that I now that I say it again, yeah, I was yeah. Say, like, only for Bill. Thing. Bill, if you need underwear, I got you, bro. Yeah. Come come say what's up to me. I'll give you a fresh pair. But uh, yeah, an American, you know, legend of the game. He's he's a guy who put jujitsu on the map in California, uh, you know, and and put kind of Americans on the map. Definitely was 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 a guy who who was upsetting a lot of those those Brazilians who were just dominating the competition back in the day. And everybody was like, man, who is this this Bill the Grill guy? But uh, you know, Bill is legit as they come. Not sure, you know, what his training situation is like these days. But uh, you know, Darce chokes. He's got sick nasty darts chokes um I, he's just a dude that it's like does he have a run does he not i don't know i mean obviously he's not in his prime in this situation to like win trials but it's just more fun that he's in the mix like yeah. that's that's kind of how i view it like i'm excited to get to see him compete i've obviously never i've never seen him compete like live or anything with my own two eyes so i just think it'd be fun but yeah i feel like if you if you started jiu-jitsu kind of you know 10 15 years ago he's one of your original favorite grapplers yeah because you know, yeah. he was just killing everybody at that time Anybody else we're missing before we move to 88, Joe? Uh, John Combs, Oliver Taza, who's obviously a threat at any single trials to win. Uh, Majid Hage, Pio Leclerc, Michael Lira, Kieran Kitchuk, Max Hansen, Ben Eddy. Kieran, absolute beast. Uh, Rolando. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Rolando in the mix is sick. Kieran, Kieran is a dude who been training at B-team now. I think he'd go on a deep run for sure. Uh, Rolando in the mix is really cool. R- Rolando's so fun to watch. Yeah. Obviously in the gi, we've seen him a lot in the gi. But he's just so exciting, such good wrestling. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. Explosive, yeah. yeah. He's got a really dynamic style of, of jujitsu, you know. And I'm not sure how much ADCC competition uh, that Rolando ha- has done, really. And I haven't seen too much no gi of him uh, these past several years either. Yeah. But but another guy who kind of like you know when I was when I was kind of starting out jujitsu as a as a white in blue belt and stuff, you know, I was watching Rolando Sampson highlights on, on, uh, on YouTube. That was kind of one of the guys who, who, who just was putting together highlight videos on YouTube and, and was just like, Oh my God, how did he do that? Yeah. How is he taking that guy's back? How? So he's a wild man. I yeah. feel like that is one of the nice things about West coast trials is because of the proximity to some of the more gee specific areas. Yeah. You will get more gee guys just like tossing their hat in like, yes, I'll, I'll go to Vegas this weekend and try ADCC trials. Maybe I win it for sure. So excited to see all those dudes in seventy seven. Let's uh let's go eighty eight. <clears throat> who we who we got uh eighty eight? Obviously the returning the former most recent West Coast Trials eighty eight champ, right? J Rod. J Rod mix. So gotta talk about J Rod. J Rod uh I mean just unreal. He obviously lost to Couch at East Coast, but he's a guy that I know I know Couch submitted him. So that aside, watching Mika versus J Rod at WNO. And like Mika not being able to armbar or finish him that entire match, and now just like seeing J Rod just escape what seems to be like everything, I just feel like there's a certain level where it's like, all right, you're not submitting J Rod, so put that aside. Like it takes someone like Couch to be able to do that. Put that aside. You're probably not submitting J Rod in ADCC rules. Now, how do you beat him if you can't submit him? You know what I mean? Like wrestling is so good, scrambles are so good. I would assume he's just like. The J Rod we saw at East Coast Trials would probably get stomped by the J Rod we're about to see at West Coast. Like in that in the B team room, one of the best gyms in the world, but also a guy like J Rod who progresses so much yeah. and uh and is learning so much, is so young in his career. Yeah. Like I just feel like, man, J Rod's gonna be tough. Yeah, still so young in the game, you know, he's still only been doing jiu-jitsu a, a couple years, you know, and a lot of these guys have been doing it for, for decades, basically. And so it just goes to show just kind of um, how talented J Rod really is, you know, and I feel like he he came into the East Coast trials and he just looked like a completely yeah. different grappler. He just looked like a new grappler, you know. He just had that confidence to him, and uh, you know, he went out and smothered, choked 
um, a guy, I believe, Crazy. you know, and, and so like he, he just had that kind of like that aura to him that said that like, you know, I deserve to be here. I deserve to be at the top echelon. I've already proved it to myself. I've already found that out. You know, now it's just about going and getting it done. He ran into a guy that was just on fire. Nobody was going to take it away from, from Jacob Couch that day. You know, and sometimes you just run into guys like that um, who are just having a day. Um, of course, Jacob had his day in uh, in last time at, at the West Coast Trials. So maybe this, you know, that'll bring him a, a little good luck. He's kind of done this before at this at this turn at this exact tournament. Um, so yeah, I think I think J Rod definitely, you know, you got to be watching him. He's going to have some of the most dynamic jujitsu um, of the of the entire weekend for sure. But you can't forget about a guy like Elder Cruz. That's El- what I was going to say, bro. Yeah, at Elder- some point, if J Rod wants to win, he's going to probably have to go through Elder. Yeah, Cruz. yeah, I think you know might be a good final, Elder versus versus J Rod. Um, you know, Elder obviously he's he's kind of coming down. He's usually I feel like usually he's up in the 99s and stuff, but this time he's he's decided to come down to to 88. And he had an incredible run, beat William Tackett, I know, a teammate of his, in the semifinals at East Coast Trials, and then you know again ran into the buzzsaw that was Jacob Couch. Um, but but Elder Cruz, J Rod, that that seems like a pretty pretty good match. 100. percent Who who else we got in the mix, Joe? I think we got to talk a little bit more about William Tackett, West Coast yeah. Trials champion last time around, did submit J-Rod at East Coast Trials. I think that might have had something to do with the fact that it was the same leg that Couch had just leg locked. Oh, that's right. In the third place match. In the third place yeah. match that yeah. he was able to ankle lock him. I feel like because of that heel hook, that might have made things a little bit easier. Yeah. Uh, but still, William Tackett uh, in the mix to beat anybody in this bracket, Elder included. Uh, in that rematch. Also have Ryan Aiken, who I think is super tough, beat Jacob Couch like right before East Coast Trials last time. Uh, David Garmo, Achilles Hocho. We've been talking about the Hochas. Achilles, Super Beast. Jason Rao, Steven Martinez, Clay Mayfield, Angela Claiborne, Chris Wojcik, Abel Montaigne, Sean Yadamarco, super tough division. Wow, yeah, this is a, a pretty stacked division as well. And yeah, I totally agree. William Tackett has has the ability to beat anybody. Um, he's got that endless gas tank. You know, you, you know, you're never gonna gonna kind of outwork William Tackett. Um, and he'll get another shot probably at, at one of those guys, Elder or, or J Rod. And um, yeah, could could be a good good weekend for the Tackett brothers. I think C- sure. Caleb Tackett's in there too, right? Yeah, yeah, he's one of the, in, there, in yeah. one of these divisions. Uh, so it's always fun to watch all three of the Tackett brothers compete alongside each other. Definitely, I think a name you said that uh, is worth pointing out, Chris Wojcik. I think Chris basically his the last his kind of coming out thing was West Coast Trials last time around. He beat Cody Steele. beat Cody Steele, yeah, yeah. It was like, you know, it was running around like, hey, what, what happened? It's like, oh, dude, this guy beat Cody Steele. You know, it was all crazy. Um, Chris has pretty unreal wrestling, but he also is just a very cerebral grappler. Like, yeah, you know, like, I know he has like a blog and everything. He writes a lot about jiu-jitsu, but he's just one of those guys you can tell. It's like, all right, this dude's very cerebral about mm-hmm. jiu-jitsu and mm-hmm. grappling, and he thinks about all of it. And, and obviously he's trained a lot more B-team now. Um, we saw him at uh, European trials, I believe, which he looked good, but he wasn't able to get it done. So he's been gaining more and more experience in the rule set. And I think he is a guy who has a lot of the tools where he could have a crazy run as well. So Chris Wojcik, keep your eyes on on him as well. And, and Achilles Hocha there. Achilles, yeah. Achilles you know, he's too. another guy who's just been um, gaining that experience. Very, very young. You know, um, He's a big kid. You wouldn't expect him to be as young as he is, I feel like. At least yeah. I didn't. Um, but he, he was out there, you know, had a, had some of the best matches, I think, at, sure. at the South American I think his trials. match, him versus Mateus Lutz, the first one could have been match of the tournament, and then him versus Andre at the second one probably could have been yeah. there for yeah. the best match. So, you know, Achilles is just kind of slowly putting it together as, as well, and, and you know, who knows? You know, one of these guys shows up on the, on the right day, and, and yeah, again, there's there's five, six, seven, eight, nine names in there that, that could win. For sure. Is is Callan in this one, or is he in under 99? Callan Sabino. 99. 99? Oh, okay. okay, sick. Anybody, anybody else we should talk about real quick? We want to bump up to uh, under 99. Feeling good. I'm going to throw out a real dark horse pick for the weekend. Angelo Claiborne, I think, is going to do very well. Uh, obviously, his teammate Elijah came out as a dark horse, won it at 77 last time. <clears throat> Angelo was in that bracket or uh, at 88, but lost very close decision to Garmo. I think he's you know a guy who, if things break right for him, he can make a super deep run. For sure. All right, let's bump up to uh, under 99. 
So the the big boy divisions, mm-hmm. you know, you got to be a certified truck house if you want to sign up for under or over ninety nine. Those are the official rules from ADC. <laughs> I didn't make them. So, but... Yeah, I, I didn't make them. I'm just here to let you guys know, certified truck houses only. Who do we got uh, in this under ninety nine? So obviously we talked about Callen Callen Sabino, uh, Atos Grappler, a dude who I mean that dude gets so amped up at, at South American trials. I remember like. He was there, and I remember like looking across the mat and seeing Callan just like just so jacked up, edge of the mat, you know, just like rocking back and forth, yeah, staring, dude, oh. staring holes into the mat. And I was just like, "Oh shit, okay, Callan's almost up. I better run over there." And I'd run over there. I'd be like, "All right, man. Well, you're you're on deck. You're up next." And he's like, "No, nah, no, nah, got about three more hours." And I was like, "What, bro? <laughs> Calm ready. down. <laughs> Are you ready. so amped up?" But <laughs> Callan's the man. So uh, excited to see him compete again. I see Troy Mercer on that list. That's pretty sick. Troy Mercer in the mix. Uh, Pedigo, Pedigo guy. Pedigo PSF Apex in Dallas uh, guy. So that's cool. I saw Adam Bradley in there yep. and uh, Michael Real Pixley. Adam Bradley. Michael Pixley, I think, super dark horse, right? For sure. Yeah, yeah. I think we were talking about that earlier. Just like, you know, I, man, it, it feels like um, we've been waiting for, for Pixley to put it, put, put it together. He had a great run at the East Coast Trials, ran into uh, Adam Bradley, but um, would love to see Pixley do it, man. That'd be sick. And he's just got the perfect style for it. You know, if he can push it to to uh, overtime or push it to the wrestling exchanges, nobody is taking Michael Pixley down sure. in, in these divisions. So, well, yeah, that'd be that'd be great to see him. Obviously, I think a lot of the Pedigo guys got a big a big um, boost of confidence seeing their boy Couch do it last time. You know, and they want the they want that repeat. For sure. Who who else is in the mix over there, Joe? We got Stefan Banta. We got Devante. We got Adam Bradley, Michael Pixley, Alex Grandy, and Adrian Neslick. Great last trials. Count Sabino, Daishi Goto, and Richie Martinez. Mm. Up Boogie. At, he, we talked about certified truck houses. I don't know if uh, uh, Boogie is exactly a certified truck yeah, house, but he's, he's in the truck house division. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, he, he must be a truck driver then, all right? <laughs> yeah. No, Richie's got that, yeah, he, he's got that kind of like alternate style that just kind of really messes everybody up, I feel like. Obviously, good with the rubber guard and the go-go platas and stuff like that. Always a fun time to watch. I actually remember 2019, or well, when was it? I forget the last ADCC. He had, anyway, at one of the last, uh, not the last West Coast Trials, but the one before that, uh, he had a couple incredible matches, I remember, uh, from from the trials from there, so... Always putting on some interesting jujitsu, and then yeah, Michael Grandy there kind of came out of uh, nowhere a little bit for, for, for me um, at, at East Coast Trials, but uh, he looked really, really good, and so beat Devonta. Yeah, beat I Devonta. Mean, he's going to be one of the favorites to do well in this division. Is going to be really highly seated. Did yeah. you say you said Devonte's in this one, or he's a, yes? Okay, yeah, Devonte. I think a guy who has to be considered one of the potential podium potential winners. I, sure. I'll throw another sneaky favorite maybe out there. Stefan Banta. I think yeah. Stefan Banta is Banta's, uh, maybe the guy in this division. Banta's got a, a good shot here, you know. For sure. Ban- Banta's one of those guys who it's like whenever he pins somebody and is just on top of them, it's like, all right, well, they're stuck there now forever. Yeah. Literally for, <laughs> till the over. end of time. Yeah. Like, yeah. like, so, yeah, he could come out and uh, – and dominate. Great gym for it too. Yeah, I don't Great know how. I don't know much about his wrestling. You guys know how good of a wrestler he is or anything? You guys think that'll come into play? Or? I don't think he's a stellar wrestler, yeah. like maybe like a Michael Pixley is. Would obviously out wrestle him a bunch, but he's yeah. that big, he's that strong, he's yeah. that positionally sound, I, I and strategically sound as well. He's for uh, sure a truck house. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, he's a truck dude, house. Him and Richie dude. is not the same level of yeah. house. Uh, <laughs> these are the Big Dan level houses. I was gonna right? say Stefan Banta could live in that Big Dan house. And he'd be like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. It seems fine to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think him and for me, him, Devonte, and Pixley are probably like the top three guys I'm, I'm circling in this division with a bunch of really good like Callen and, and Grandy. I have a feel, uh, I have and Bradley that, like dark horse guys. I have a feeling that Adam Bradley is going to be do do well. You know, we saw him out out in California uh, wrestling with yep. uh, with J Flow mm-hmm. and working on that. You know, we all know how talented J Flow is, and he's a guy who can really kind of up your up your game. And uh, and then I believe I saw him out here in in uh, in Austin training with the B team crew crew. Sure. So he's getting a lot of different looks. Um, Adam's a guy who's been in the game now for, for a long time, and and he's waiting for for his you know his big. Uh, coming out moment i think so for sure so yeah another another sick division gonna be interested to see how this one shakes up but uh let's go the last division over 99 this one to me is probably got to be the john hansen division right like yeah i think we're looking at the john hansen show there's a couple other tough guys in here notably adcc veteran amir alam of 10th planet who uh probably be your two seed 
uh, Michael Pizzuto, Vince, who we all know from B Team, and Braylor Grout mm-hmm. uh, will also be in here. But to me, it's like John Hansen is so much more proven at a high level than a lot of these other guys that I yeah. think that he's for sure one of the biggest favorites coming into the weekend. I feel like we got to give some love to that uh, Diego Vasquez as well, ADCC um, veteran as well, Diego. Um, I believe... What, was he in the finals with against Big Dan at East Coast Trials? Was it Diego? No, that was Damon Ramos. Damon Ramos. Oh, that's what I'm thinking. I'm Which, and I haven't, I haven't seen Damon, Damon, Ramos. Damon Ramos enter this one, right? He's not in it, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, no, I think he would do really well. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought Damon, he was in Damon there. Ramos beat John Hansen at East Coast. Yeah, he'll hooked him. And then yeah. That's what I was thinking. I was thinking yeah. of Damon, but Damon's not Damon's up. not entered. That guy's oh, not okay. in. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Enzo Gracie guy. I mean, I think he would do really, really well in this division. Yeah, He'd be your one seed. Yeah. Uh, but not entered. Okay, doing? gotcha. So, yeah, obviously, John Hansen, I think, is the guy to beat in this one. Brayler Grout in the mix, too. Yeah. Uh, Brayler, yeah. always exciting. Uh, a super tall dude. I don't know if he's a truck house, but he's like incredibly tall. He's a big he's boy. Skinny. He's, he's a little more surfer body. So, yeah, yeah. But he's getting he's getting bigger. I, I you know, I feel like you see him kind of putting on a, some, some poundage. Uh, but yeah, Brayler is a guy who's, um, he was always right there, it feels like, but sure. he had a great run at the East Coast Trials. I'm forgetting who he lost to. Um, I really remember. It was Adam Bradley or something. I, for, I forget. Yeah. But um, oh, oh no, who's you next know, on who's next crime? No, you know, no, you know who it was? It was that um, the, the guy who had the Short Kings rash, rash guard. Remember that guy? Oh yeah, that was Nez. Nez. Or, yeah, Adrian Nez. Adrian I think Nez. That yeah, sure that was. He, no, that was. Maybe that was Grandy. I'm sorry. It was two guys who like both popped off. Shout out, a, shout out to Short King, whoever it was. Yeah, yeah. I remember he had a good run, and then I believe he lost to uh, Paul Ardia. Gotcha. In, either in the semis or the finals. But. Yeah, either way, though, excited to watch those dudes. Is there anybody else, Joe, we're missing? Over 99? Yeah, that's kind of the main names there for sure. All right, I mean, so. Over 99, one of the, one of the thinner divisions, actually. Ironically. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, so, obviously... All the divisions are super stacked, super stoked to watch West Coast Trials. Um, before no, we go real quick, you guys want to give a little W&O preview? We got, we got yeah. W&O 23 coming up May 10th in Arlington, Texas. The tickets are available now. And, uh, yeah, so we've announced some of the matches. This, this one right here we got up on the screen. We got Mika Galvao going up against Tommy Langacker for the Welterweight Championship absolute banger of a match two dudes you couldn't you couldn't love more you know Mika yeah. Galvao, tommy a couple of the boys right there kind of it's kind of the homies on the homies crime on this one but still yeah. gonna be sick i'm excited to see how it matches up watching tommy nogi is so fun dude it's been so sick seeing him kind of take over the nogi scene dating back to to the 2022 adcc season now into this year it's been it's been really cool so i'm excited for this one you guys what do you guys think about this match yeah, heck yeah, man. This one's great. Like you said, a couple of the homies. Uh, Mika has been looking on fire. You know, anytime Mika competes, I think it's must-see TV. And, uh, you know, this is going to be one of the biggest uh, biggest title defenses of his career, I, I, sure. I think, here at, at Who's Number One. Tommy is as game as they come. He's the Viking. He's a dude who kind of throws caution to the wind and, and you know, a little bit known as, as a gee competitor. So is Mika. Um, but these guys have made the transition. Both these guys have, have uh, been battling a little bit recently with the Rotolo brothers, um, or, or Cade Rotolo at, at least. Yeah. So, um, but love to see that Tommy is is on on the card here. We've been trying to get Tommy on, on long overdue. Yeah, for, for, to get on W and O for a while. Um, you know, one of the best grapplers in the world, hands down. And uh, you know, glad to see that he punched his ticket to ADCC. And this this could be you know a preview of something we see at ADCC for sure. You know, these two guys. Like I said, elite of the elite. And, uh, you know, Tommy, every time we see him, I feel like he's adding a new fold to his Nogi game. So this should be a big, big title defense for, for Mika Galvao. For sure, man. So we got this one. What other ones have we announced? We just dropped uh, Jasmine Rocha versus Emily Fajera, formerly Emily Fernandez. Uh, she got married. Um, they're they're going to be competing. So Jasmine, someone I love to see on who's number one. She's so fun. She kind of fits what WNO is supposed to be, you know? It's supposed to be a little a little something extra to it, you know? You're coming yeah. out there, you're going for the kill. You're going to talk about it, you know? Like, not afraid to get into the into the mix verbally and all that stuff. Yeah, so, a little bit a little bit of entertainment here, too, right? Yeah, and I think both 100%. those both those girls bring bring not only, you know, flawless jujitsu, yeah. but they also bring the entertainment and, and bring the fans along with them. So you got to really, really appreciate that. Emily had her who's number one debut. I can't remember what card, but it was against Rosa Walsh. She just showed an incredibly impressive impressive close guard game and uh, kind of dominated that match so this is her second i love when a grappler has a good close guard game like, how, cool. how sick is that when it a is cool, dude. Good close no that's like that that's like one thing that's so sick to watch brianna st marie yeah brianna st 
Marie just has like the dopest close guard. I know she just had a big match with Fion. Not talk too much about it, but like Fion ended up turning the ties, getting the win. But there was like early on, she got into that BSM uh, close guard and that high guard. That little, yeah, like, she was arm start, she was starting to get yeah, like the yeah. arms a little set. Like I was like, oh shit, is BSM gonna do it? Because she does have like a world class arm bar, great close guard. Eventually, Fion t- changed the ch- the tides and uh, kind of dominated from there out. But Fion had an insane Terrico Plata entry. So go find that on the internet somewhere and check that out. That was pretty dope. Some cool grappling there. But uh, yeah, so Emily, a girl with a great close guard. Like you said, always fun to watch. Going to be going up against Jasmine. Who else we, we announced? Baby Shark and Shay. Yeah, we announced uh, Diogo Hayes, a.k.a. Baby Shark, a.k.a. Megalodon, a.k.a. a bunch of other nicknames that he gave himself. Classic <laughs> move right there. I respect it big time. As a guy with a lot of nicknames I gave myself, I respect the move. Big nasty. So, so shout, big yeah, nasty, shout out, you're nasty. <laughs> shout out to Diogo versus Shay. Shay's a dude who's like, bro, if you guys don't know about Shay Montague, you're it's about time, to. Yeah, it's time to get hit. Yeah. This dude, Straight up. We, we have an all access about him from uh, his run at Worlds at Brown Belt, but dude is just so fun, dude. Like, so funny. He's got charisma. He's uh, just an exciting looking dude, honestly. Like, yeah, very interesting yeah. jiu jitsu style. Scottish, I well. believe. I think he's from yep. Scotland. Scotland. Which is just kind of awesome. <laughs> I, lo- I love that. I love when we get grapplers from different parts of the world. And yeah, he's got like a little bit of the like self deprecating humor. His fights are always super crazy exciting. I remember Brown Belt Worlds. He's in the finals. Uh, he needs to score with 30 seconds left. So he goes and he does it. He score, you know, gets the uh, what he needs with like a, a, like a second or two left. Like a second right? or two left and gets off the mat and starts cracking jokes about it. Like yeah. Shay rules. Yeah. Shay rules. He really this does. Is, I'm yeah. really excited to have yeah, him. Yeah, another guy I feel like we've we've is kind of long overdue to could get him on the who's number one universe here. For sure. Um and you know obviously a big match. Uh you know Baby Shark is coming off a loss on um on who's number one. He lost the title to, to Diego Pato. So this is a, a big match for him to kind of get back into the into the win column. But he's gonna have to do it against against a kind of wild card like like Shay Montague right. and 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 a guy who's who's a homie and and uh you know a lot of people want to see him do well, so for sure. Any, anybody else? Yeah, I, one more. Nikki and uh, JT. Huge one. Oh yeah, big big match for both these guys. Big match. Nikki Ryan versus JT Torres. Two fan favorites, of course. Um, a little bit coming from a little bit different generations, but but two guys who are still throwing down. Nikki a little younger than JT. Of course, JT a two time ADCC champion. Um, you know, so this would be a huge win, I think, for, for Nikki if you were to, to beat the two-time ADCC champion, JT. Um, haven't seen too, too much of JT these these past couple years. So uh, love to see him jumping, you know, in the deep end of the pool against a, a dangerous opponent like Nikki Ryan, uh, obviously well known for his back attacks and his leg attacks. So we, we saw JT in his W no debut against Majid, and he just kind of showed positional dominance, kind of just like almost yeah, suffocated yeah. Majid. A, a guy just stapled him. Majid to the mat. And- I think I feel like I think JT gets it. You know, he gets the exciting aspect as it well, especially what we're doing on who's number one. So I don't know. My prediction, I think we're gonna see a JT who is like that good of a grappler, but also lets it rip this time. And I think him and Nikki are going to kind of have a little bit of a barn burner, a little bit, a little bit more of a Donny Brook, if I may say so myself. Yeah, I, I think they're going to let this one rip. I love this match, man. This might be kind of sneaky match of the match of the of, of the night at who's number sure. one. Um, you know, just both these guys, like you said, are are really fan favorites and really have dynamic jujitsu. So this, yeah, man, that's going to be a really really fun match. And who knows, could be what uh, is next in line for for the winner. Of of yeah. Miko Galval versus Tommy Langacker have a little bit of a of a uh, number one contenders match on there almost definitely hundred percent. I think that it's really cool that this match is between two guys who are already invited to ADCC. Right, yeah. both these guys have already earned an invitation at minus seventy seven. So neither guy has to walk in like, man, I really got to win this match. You know, if Nikki wasn't invited, he'd be looking at this JT match like almost an audition. Right, yeah. like you know, if I pick up this win, this yep. is gonna really do a lot for me in terms of getting an invite. Now it's kind of like making a statement, right? Going in there and, and making something matter because I know this guy's going to be in my bracket and I want to, you know, really set myself apart right now. Mm-hmm. 100%. So those are the uh, the matches we have announced right now so far, but we got a few more main card matches, some yeah. some some big time matches. Obviously, you guys you guys know how these W you know cards work. Listen, if you like good grappling, you know what you should be watching. You should be watching W you know. You should be watching Flow Grappling. You should definitely be watching the ADCC Trials this weekend. It's gonna going down Las Vegas, Nevada. Eight more people are going to punch their ticket to the big show. Can't wait. It's all going to end up at T-Mobile Arena August seventeenth and eighteenth, and uh, 
yeah any, any closing thoughts from you guys before we sign off here man just so stoked for for west coast trials coming up here this this weekend um you know it's definitely like i said one of the best tournaments of the year so if you guys are on the fence definitely check that one out glue to your tv uh, Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be some incredible matches and some stuff that we had no idea was going to happen is going to happen, of course. And and who knows, hopefully we'll come out with a couple more uh, movies from the, from the West Coast Trials. For sure. All right. You at home, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Go drop a comment right now. Go watch Not Bad for a Hillbilly, the, the story of Jacob Couch's uh, East Coast Trials run. Leave us some comments. Share this video with your friend that you're trying to get into jujitsu. All right, share with that guy. We all have that guy that we've been talking to, yeah. telling him that he needs to start training. He's like, oh, God, I want to get in shape first. Yeah, whatever. Send him this video. Tell him to watch it. And then go ahead and send it to your mom also. Make her watch this. All right, let's get those numbers through the roof. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next episode.